In 2024, three companies are at the forefront of the emerging space tourism industry. Following close behind are startups also looking to capitalize on the interest of space, ranging from luxury space balloons to science fiction level hotels. Today, I'm going to be breaking down what it's like to go to space with these companies and how much they're charging to get there. Out of the three, Virgin Galactic offers an experience that is the most familiar to anyone that has ever flown commercial. Leonardo DiCaprio and Brad Pitt are just two of the hundreds of people that have put down massive deposits to reserve their spot in line to board a Virgin Galactic flight. So what can a Virgin Galactic ticket holder expect when their number is finally called? It all starts at Spaceport America. Virgin Galactic passengers arrive a few days prior to their scheduled departure to undergo training. Essentially the same basic training that astronauts undergo, but abbreviated down to just three days where they'll focus on safety procedures, getting to know the cabin, and learn how to maneuver in low gravity. On the big day, the four passengers and two pilots board Unity, the Virgin Galactic spacecraft, which begins its journey attached to a carrier jet. The conjoined craft takes off from a runway the same way that a commercial plane would, and climbs to about 50,000 feet. Once the conjoined craft reaches altitude, Unity detaches from the carrier jet. And the Unity rocket engine roars to life, carrying Unity and its passengers to the edge of space. Once it reaches its peak, the passengers are given the green light to release their harnesses and experience the weightlessness of space. Unity is dotted with 17 windows for the passengers to take in the most unforgettable views of their lives. While the passengers are enjoying the view, Unity performs a backflip by rotating the main cabin upward, independent of the wings. This backflip angles the windows down towards Earth. In that moment, I was able to look out the window. I was like, oh my God. And I just took those moments and it was just so precious and special and like surreal. Once the backflip is complete, the pilots begin guiding Unity towards Earth as the passengers get strapped back in for re-entry. As the craft enters the atmosphere and gravity begins to take hold, the pilots maneuver the craft back down to the surface and land on the same runway that Unity took off from. The entire experience is over in just 90 minutes. And at $450,000, it's currently the cheapest ticket to space. But if I had my pick of going to space with any of these three companies, Blue Origin would be my pick. Much like Virgin Galactic, Blue Origin passengers spend a couple days training for their trip and learning about the cabin. It's important to note that Blue Origin trips are done without any pilots or any trained personnel on board. It's just you and five other civilians. That's because the rocket and the capsule operate completely autonomously. On launch day, the six passengers will arrive at the launch site and head up to the New Shepard rocket. In this moment, it's just six civilians, a 60-foot rocket, and one thing to do. Five, four, command start, two, one.
New Shepard's rocket carries the passengers up through the atmosphere at nearly three times the speed of sound. Approximately three minutes into the journey, the capsule and the rocket detach. The rocket autonomously lands itself back on Earth, leaving the passenger capsule behind 62 miles above the surface, where the passengers are unbuckling their straps and experiencing zero gravity for the first time. They'll have a few minutes to soak in the incredible view. This is awesome. Before getting strapped back in for re-entry. The capsule's parachutes will deploy, allowing it to float back down to Earth. <laughs> the entire experience only lasts about 11 minutes. The use of a rocket instead of a plane allows the Blue Origin experience to deliver a much more authentic astronaut liftoff and landing than Virgin Galactic. There's currently no official price for a Blue Origin ticket, but recent passengers have spent anywhere from 1 to 1.25 million per seat. But if you're looking for the most authentic astronaut experience, then SpaceX is for you. SpaceX passengers spend multiple months training for their trip, because instead of spending a few minutes in space, these passengers spend three days in Earth's orbit. Each passenger receives a custom-tailored flight suit and 3D-printed helmet. On launch day, the passengers are shuttled to the launch tower, where the SpaceX Crew Dragon capsule is perched on top of a 230-foot Falcon 9 rocket. The Crew Dragon capsule is the most advanced capsule in the world. There are very few physical buttons or knobs on board, and the main controls are all executed by three touchscreen monitors. Once the passengers are strapped in, their flight suits are connected to the capsule's life support system, which will be able to monitor the passengers' vitals and maintain the proper temperature and oxygen inside of their suits. 45 minutes prior to liftoff, the ground crew will seal the capsule. Once all systems are go, we're ready for liftoff. Three, two, one, zero. Ignition. Liftoff. Just under the three minute mark, the first stage rocket booster will detach and make its way back to the surface. Autonomously landing itself on SpaceX's drone ship off the coast. As the second stage rocket booster attached to Dragon propels the capsule further into space. And finally, 12 minutes into the journey, the second stage rocket booster detaches as Dragon reaches the appropriate distance and speed to orbit Earth. The passengers are now free to unbuckle and take off their flight suits. The cone of the Dragon capsule opens up, revealing a glass dome offering the best views of Earth that any private citizen can obtain. It's so big, it takes up the entire cupola's view and then you can see just the blackness of space around you and it's just mesmerizing the moment i saw the earth from the cupola it was indescribable there's very few that have seen the earth from the altitude that we've been at before i mean it's it's much higher than the space station so we could see like i mean it felt like the entirety of Remember, this is a three-day journey in space. So my first three questions were, what do they eat, where do they sleep, and how do they use the bathroom? Prior to their trip, the passengers of Inspiration4 taste-tested a variety of food that could be packaged for spaceflight, so that SpaceX could accommodate them as best they could. Unfortunately, everything has to be eaten at room temperature, 
since there's currently no food warming appliance on Dragon, but that's something SpaceX hopes to have for future missions. In terms of sleep, the passengers use sleeping bags that are tied down to their seats to prevent anyone from floating off and hitting something in the middle of the night. And finally, the bathroom. There's a hose and suction device in the capsule that comes with a privacy curtain. This is similar to the system that's been used on the ISS for decades. The crew of Inspiration4 spent their time conducting experiments, creating art, playing music, it's essentially a three-day sleepover in zero gravity with an amazing view. At the end of the trip, the suits come back on and everyone gets strapped back in for re-entry. The capsule will detach from its final module, revealing the heat shield. The onboard thrusters will make small adjustments to point the heat shield down towards Earth as the capsule begins re-entry. Once the capsule reaches an appropriate altitude, parachutes will deploy slowing down the capsule before it lands just off the coast, where SpaceX crew will be ready to retrieve the capsule and its passengers. The capsule will be lifted onto the deck of a ship where crews will be on hand to assist the passengers in exiting the capsule. We went to space for three days and successfully came back. And the cost for the most authentic astronaut experience available to civilians is 50 million per person. Okay, but what if boarding a rocket powered craft is a little too much for you? New players in the space tourism industry like Worldview are developing space balloon tours where passengers board luxurious pressurized cabins that are pulled to the stratosphere by a football field sized helium balloon. You won't be high enough to experience zero gravity, but the view, the amount of time you get to spend soaking it in, and all the amenities that come with it make this form of space tourism worth considering. Your journey on flight day begins just before dawn. You'll gradually ascend for two hours before reaching your peak at about 100,000 feet. You'll float at this peak for about two to four hours, where you can enjoy 360 degree panoramic views, special earth viewing cameras, a star view telescope, and in-flight dining and bar service. Also, there's a bathroom, like an actual bathroom. At the end of your journey, the cabin will begin a 90 minute descent via pilot steered parafoil. You will then gently land in a designated area near your departure spaceport. There's a ton of benefits to growing a tourism offering around this method. For starters, it's much cheaper. Worldview tickets are nine times cheaper than the current Virgin Galactic tickets. There's also the environmental argument. There's no rocket fuel to be burnt here. It's also much safer and accessible to a wider range of ages and disabilities than boarding a rocket-powered craft. And the price for a balloon tour with Worldview is 50000 per person. But why spend half a day in a cabin when you can spend multiple days living in space? Companies like Axiom and Orbital Assembly Corporation are already developing private space stations for work and leisure to offer longer stays in space. Orbital Assembly is currently manufacturing two ring-shaped stations that will orbit Earth. The stations will be called Pioneer Station and Voyager Station. Pioneer will have the capacity to host 28 guests, and the company hopes to open as early as 2025. With the larger Voyager station, which will accommodate up to 280 guests, coming in 2027. The stations will feature all of the amenities you would expect from a high-end resort. Private suites, a bar, restaurant, even a gym. But the most intriguing thing about these stations is that they will simulate gravity by rotating the stations at high speeds. Orbital Assembly is already taking reservations for three-day stays at $5 million. Now, the prices for these experiences are obviously out of reach for anyone outside of the top 1%. So when can we expect prices to come down? For the next few decades, going to space may remain a luxury reserved for the rich, much like air travel was in its inception. In the 1940s, a one-way trip from Boston to Los Angeles cost upwards of $4,500 by today's standards. And that comes with multiple stops along the way. But as time went on, the planes were able to carry more people, fly further, and do so more efficiently. 
All the incremental improvements over the decades, paired with increased competition, has opened up air travel to the masses. Okay, so what steps are these space tourism companies taking to drive down cost? Well, you already know the most important innovation that this generation of rocket engineers has achieved. Reusability. The fact that these giant expensive rockets are able to safely land back on Earth for refueling is laying the foundation for space travel to grow in the decades to come. SpaceX spends just 1% of what NASA used to spend 50 years ago to get people and equipment into space. Okay, how about increasing capacity? Virgin Galactic announced that it will begin developing its Delta series of spacecrafts this year, which will increase its passenger count from four to six. Not huge, but progress. Sending people and equipment further more efficiently is essentially the name of the game for SpaceX and Blue Origin, who have won massive contracts with the likes of NASA to begin colonizing the moon and beyond. The next few decades of rocket engine development will be all about increasing output while decreasing input if we're going to make it to the moon and beyond over and over, which will have a direct trickle-down effect on the rockets used for tourism. There's still so much to look forward to in the space tourism industry. Let me know which company you would go to space with if money were no object. I want to leave you with a message from Richard Branson during Virgin Galactic's first official flight. To all you kids down there, I was once a child with a dream, looking up to the stars. Now I'm an adult in a spaceship with lots of other wonderful adults looking down to our beautiful, beautiful Earth. To the next generation of dreamers, if we can do this, just imagine what you can do. If you like videos about the latest trends in tech, entertainment, and all things innovation, subscribe for more.